Hi there, welcome to this month's Walls Branch Bird Talk. I'm Matthew, and today we'll be looking at the tiny and delightful blue gray gnat catcher. As always, we'll go over ID, ecology, behavior, range, and habitat, and then off with a few fun facts about this bird. This will be a bit of a shorter talk this month, so buckle up, hang on, and let's go. So first off is identification. Blue gray gnat catchers are tiny round little birds with long tails, short pointed black beaks, and white bellies. Females and non-breeding young males have similar plumages, which are a drab blue-gray with dull brownish wings, like the individual on the left. And males in the summer are a much richer blue-gray with darker wings that are closer to black. Uh, the breeding male also has a black unibrow that's only really visible up close, uh, as you can see in the picture on the right. Both have striking white feathers on the outer edges of their tails that they like to flash when flying or perched as well. They're a very easily recognizable species because even Carolina chickadees, which are the closest in terms of shape and size around here, aren't as colorful nor are their tails as long and flashy. So I know what you're thinking, but sadly, Gnats make up very little, if any, part of the blue-gray gnat catcher's diet. According to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, their diet consists more of spiders, caterpillars, moths, leafhoppers, grasshoppers, and similar insects. When trying to eat larger prey that can't be swallowed whole, gnat catchers will tear the wings off before swallowing the body. In terms of behavior, the word that best describes these little birds is sprightly. They're usually easy to see as they energetically flit around branches and bushes, giving high-pitched, raspy, squeaky calls. Uh, they're very territorial in the nesting season, and both members of a pair will often chase off birds much larger than themselves, with the males being noticeably more aggressive. Blue-gray gnat catchers are very vocal and often announce themselves by singing and giving their calls as they dart in and out of shrubbery and among tree branches. According to the Audubon Society, their song is described as a thin musical warble, while their call is a whining <laughs> Their vocalizations have a kind of uh, raspy, squeaky quality to them as well. Nests are fine cups of fibers, lichen, twigs, and bark about two to three inches wide, made above halfway up a tree, often saddled between a twig or against a knot or another twig for support. Uh, it takes about two weeks for both the male and the female to build the nest, and then another 10 to 15 days later, the female will lay her first brood of three to five eggs, which is incubated in turns by both parents. Uh, the chicks then hatch 11 to 15 days later and are cared for by both parents. The young then leave the nest around another 10, 15 days. Um, since they typically start nesting around April, which is fairly early, uh, a pair of gnat catchers will typically have two broods in a season. Now let's talk about range and habitat. The map you see here is the blue-gray gnat catcher's North American range map, courtesy of the Audubon Society. The dark red areas are where they're primarily found in the summer, uh, blue is their winter range, and the purple is where they can be found year-round. The faint red and faint blue areas are where they're seen less often in the summer and winter, respectively. According to Professor Jennifer Roof of the University of Michigan's Museum of Zoology, they tend to leave their wintering grounds in mid-March and depart from their summering grounds uh, to their wintering grounds around mid-August. In addition to their North American range, they are also found in the Bahamas and Central America, especially in the winter. We're kind of on the edge of their year-round range, but according to eBird charts of numbers of checklists that are submitted that contain this bird, it does have a presence in Augusta year-round, but it's most abundant in spring. They're typically found in broadleaf woodlands, shrublands, and especially wooded areas near water. Um, habitat edges are especially attractive to blue-gray gnat catchers, like forest edges and the like. 
Uh, while found in a wine range of habitats, they apparently do not like coniferous forests. Huh. Now, let's end off on a few fun facts. First off, gnat catcher pairs will build several nests during the season that don't get used or will be recycled into new nests that actually do get used. According to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, this is likely a countermeasure against predators, and the male often builds these nests mostly by himself. Uh, there's also a subspecies found on the island of Cozumel, Mexico, uh, and is pictured above being much more subtly and darkly colored than its mainland relatives. Um, you can see it's got the much brighter eye ring there. Uh, also, according to Professor Roof of the University of Michigan's Museum of Zoology, bird banding data has estimated that their average lifespan to be around 50 months or about four years and two months. And finally, the blue-gray gnat catcher is the most northerly occurring species of gnat catcher, with most other species occurring in the tropics of Central and South America. It's also the only truly migratory one, according to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. So that's all I have for you today. Here are my sources for today's information. I highly suggest checking these out if you want to learn more about these fantastic little birds. And I'll hold these up for a second so you can pause the video if you'd like to jot these down, look these up. Uh, you can always use your Pines card to put some great bird books on hold at gapines.org or call any of our libraries for more assistance. On behalf of the Augusta Richmond County Library System, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and I wish you happy birthday.